Hi, I'm Chris Chernohoy here at the University of Wisconsin River Falls and our guests today are Natalia and Stella playing violin miniatures for children. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, Natalia. Uh, hello Chris, uh, so I grew up, I was born in Russia, I grew up in a town uh, called Ariol, it's like eagle in English. I started playing violin when I was seven, uh, my teacher thought I have some promise and maybe some <laughs> talent. So I was advised to audition for a school in Moscow, which I did, and I was admitted. So I started uh, playing, um, taking violin lessons uh, from the musical college in Moscow. And I spent there 11 years, four years in the college, five years at the conservatory, Moscow State Tchaikovsky Conservatory, and then two years postgraduate study. And then I met my husband at the uh, college, <laughs> and because of him, I'm here in the United States. He moved to the United States in 2003 to study with Alex Braginski at Hamlin University, and I followed him in 2006 after finishing my postgraduate course. Um, I graduated from the University of Minnesota, got my DMA there, and I'm playing with the Minnesota Opera, uh, Minnesota Orchestra, when I can. <laughs> And uh, we're playing a lot of chamber music together with my husband and with other colleagues. <laughs> uh, I also teach, teach here at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, and I have a private teaching studio as well. Beautiful, and you have a lovely little son. Yes, I have a two and a half year old at home. <laughs> Wonderful, and Stella? Um, my, uh, I am from Novosibirsk, Siberia, which in the last few days felt just like home being here. <laughs> um, I, I also went to music school as a child and studied piano until I almost finished and I moved to the United States and went through all of the college actually here in the United States starting at the Eastman School of Music for undergrad and masters and coming here for the DMA program also to study with Alexander Braginsky and actually I've, I was friends with Ivan before I met Natalia so Ivan and I have been playing off and on through these years, and so it was really fun to play with Natalia now. And so now, of course, I, I do a little bit of teaching. I teach at Hamlin University. I'm an adjunct faculty there. and do some private teaching as well as manage an um, international piano competition that's held in Minnesota every two years. Fantastic. And you have a family as well? I do. I have two much older children. They're 15 and 17, and we all live in the suburbs of the Twin Cities. Lovely.
Well, your program here today is so interesting. Um, I, I, I guess I say we've been living in a COVID-19 pandemic, and yet look at what we're producing. All this music, all the arts, the chamber music, the collaborations. What, what have you done that you are really proud of during the pandemic, musically? I have to say that coming up, being invited to and also coming up with projects like these ones get me introduced and exposed to music I otherwise wouldn't have. So I find it very invigorating and inspiring. And I also realize that I actually have time now to do things I probably wouldn't have had there not been COVID closures. So. That's I understand true. that. We're having to look at the rainbow and find out what did we do with this time that we spent on this treadmill running and trying to do so many things when externally things were closed. What did you do? And, and I think we need to reflect on that because these are great takeaways. And Natalia, how about you? Um, well, I had a chance to record this album um, and edit it. It takes forever. <laughs> then I did participate in some chamber music uh, concerts mostly in the summer outside because there was a chance to live concerts. Mm -hmm. There was a Tchaikovsky trio performance. Um, in the fall, we performed Florence Price piano quintet at the Lost Recital. We have done a recording of Stanley Wooner's uh, composition for a CD, his CD. It was nice to see my friends again over Christmas to record some uh, church music for uh, Christmas Eve. Yes, so that has been very, very nice. Love spending time with my son more, but I do miss um, my colleagues. Of course, and because this... music's all about relationships. Yes, yes. And when you say your colleagues, you're talking about colleagues probably from the Minnesota Opera and Minnesota the Orchestra. Minnesota Opera and the Minnesota Orchestra, yes. And I miss that chance to make music together as a very big group, large group. I miss that sound of the symphony orchestra and um, I miss the jokes in the break room. I miss playing happy birthday in the beginning of the rehearsal. Uh, I miss coming back home late at night after the concert. I um, miss playing Puccini operas, Brahms symphonies. I miss that sound, that volume, that level.
You said also you've had a chance to collaborate with people and with kind of music that you haven't done. When we were talking earlier, um, we were talking about how with these pieces that Natalia was, had chosen for this program, some, some pianists, this is all they do. They are trained to play all these accompanists and you know who can play the violin miniatures, you know who can play these symphonies, you know who can, so we know that. So you have had a very broad palette. So what relationships have developed for you during the pandemic? Uh, you know, it's gonna sound funny, but I think it's a renewed and more intimate relationship with my instrument. It's, you know, I, I mean, the working with people is so few and far between for me on a good day, because, you know, as a pianist, we kind of hold up in our little rooms and we're very much a solitary creatures. And so I, treasure and enjoy immensely being in the same room with somebody and and I understand what kind of a privilege and a joy it is to do so. So even during rehearsals when we both kind of just figuring out our the feeling of how the piece goes is just so joyful because it's so great. But then um, when I go and practice on my own I have the time to 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 reflect and understand myself as a pianist both musically and technically, which, you know, I know it sounds a little corny, but it's true. It's like you, 
you, you start understanding things differently just because you have more time to reflect on them. Whereas when you constantly keep doing performances or doing all of these things, you just don't have time to think. And here you can step back and process. process. Exactly. That is the biggest gift.
When I was picking up which pieces to include, I was mostly thinking the uh, different techniques. And then, but each technique is, like Stella mentioned, very, very well. You, you, you put it really well. It's it just it's so written so well in character, so it keeps student interested, and he learns the technique in the character rather than just the notes and the motions of the fingers and the hands. Maybe you can tell better about this. No, that's actually I think you're describing it very well. I I, I just I, I delight in pieces that have great educational value in terms of developing your technique. But then it also, uh, it, you know, makes you think outside just moving your fingers and extends the understanding of what technique is. I think technique is more than just being able to move fingers fast, although that's a very, very important aspect of it. I think it's being able to create a new instrument what you have in your head. And in order to have this really full picture, you also like it's like a self-perpetuating circle where you play imaginative music and the teachers carefully guide you to understand how the music translates into feelings and emotion and then you kind of find your own path and then it becomes part of your technique. So those pieces are fabulous and uh, pianists have a number of those from famous composers and from future composers but these pieces are just stunningly beautiful and imaginative and uh, engaging.
Thank you.